Hello, I'm Sam, and you can find more of my work online at samgay.com, which is spelled S-A-M-G-U-A-Y.com, or you can follow me on Instagram at samgayart. The easiest way to support my art is to join my community over on Patreon, and thank you to all my patrons who already support me and make it possible to make videos like this one. So, how are you doing? Life has changed drastically since my last video. Um, I've barely left my apartment for over a month now, and the way I'm coping with stress is just working a lot. Um, but I've also been trying to stick to a schedule in the morning. I wake up and I have my little morning ritual, which is watering my plants, and then I do a little bit of exercise, and then I meditate, and then I journal. And having that little morning ritual really helps kind of ground me for the day instead of going straight into work or looking at the news or whatever. Um, so, I've been doing a lot of painting. Um, I hope that you're staying safe and healthy where you are and just taking care of yourself in whatever form that takes. So, what's this new thing I'm working on? It's a painting for my upcoming solo show at Haven Gallery. It opens on July 11th this year, 2020. And this is my first solo show, which is very exciting. So, even if we're still staying at home when the opening comes around, we'll find a way to get together online and cheers and talk or something. My show is called The Wound in the Mend, and it's a body of work where I'm exploring my inner world, where emotion and intuition are the ruling senses. Though these places, um, these inner worlds may not be physically tangible, I'm giving them forms through painting, and I'm giving them names and stories, which is a lot of fun. In this piece, The Healing Cup, I wanted to explore the feeling of finally having some emotional release or letting go of something that you've been bottling up. The spirit of The Healing Cup and her two sister spirits down there, Protection and Shelter, reside in the soft oceanscape with pastel waters and a misty sky full of gentle stars, which I imagine are other healing spirits like these ones. If you've been following my art for a while, you know that I usually relate water to emotion, which I think is a pretty common association. As an element, I've always found water to be soothing and healing in a lot of ways. Whether it's soothing in the way that a soft, gray, rainy day is, or a warm bath, or floating in a sensory deprivation tank, or going swimming in the ocean. I love the cold water, it's great. Um, when I was a kid and was first getting into meditation and visualization, I loved imagining exploring this oceanscape and I imagined it as super dark. Um, it was night sky, always kind of like stormy and rainy and the water was almost black and I would jump along these stones that were at the surface of the water and I would jump further and further out into the ocean until eventually the stones came to an end and then I would jump in and explore whatever my mind decided was going on under the water. Often it was glowing whales and jellyfish or stars in space and I really liked that sort of imaginary space as a soothing place to go and I think that that same place showed up in some of my tarot cards too. When I was living in Portland, Maine, I worked an evening shift cleaning doctor's offices, and I'd get home really late, and I would ride my bike around the empty streets in the middle of the night and go down to the ocean. There was a playground that overlooked the ocean, and my favorite thing was going on the swings at night, and I would always look straight forward as I was swinging, so as I went higher and higher, I would be looking right up into the sky with all the stars, and then the ocean, and then the ground, and then back up again. And that swing set at night was a sort of sacred, secret space of mine. Um, and even though it, it was a physical space, it kind of mirrored 
that imaginary space I had when I was a kid. Um, so the ocean is always a really cool, soothing place for me. Part of the fun in this piece is uh, getting to indulge in the design of a fictional, magical artifact, which is something that I did a little bit in my tarot series, but not nearly enough or to the extent that I am getting to do in this piece. Um, there are still references to the tarot in this. Um, if you can guess, the card would be the Ace of Cups that I'm referencing in this piece, which I always see as an emotional release. The details of this image all have significance, and if you want to read more about each symbol, there's a whole article on my Patreon where I talk about all of the yummy details. One of the most common questions people ask me is, where do you get your inspiration? For personal art, it requires a lot of internal explorations, and I do much of that through journaling. Journaling has become kind of a foundational part of my creative process and a place for me to cultivate ideas. Um, if you're following me on Instagram, you know that I've been sharing a series of old, older images along with journal prompts and the insights that I got from them. If it's something you're interested in, I highly recommend going and reading the full captions on Instagram, but I'm going to share the prompts themselves here with you. So here are the 10 prompts that I am sharing. So number one is how can I learn to care for myself and continue my practice of inner work in a time of fear and darkness? Number two, what new beginnings surround me and what is their significance? Number three, where does my overthinking or self-consciousness get me stuck? Number four, who am I beyond my career? How would my life be different if I didn't do art for a year? Number five, what passions have I put off exploring because they felt indulgent instead of productive? Number six, what is the line between doing my best and overdoing it? Number seven, how can I better honor where I am at now in my own life? How can I find the significance in my own individual path? Number eight, what about myself repels me or is uncomfortable to deal with? What can I learn from it? How can I accept and respect this part of me? Number nine. What do I want to say about my work? Where do I need to be brave? And number 10. What do I value about myself and how can I share that with others? I love asking questions and writing about them and seeing what ideas come up and how I can express those ideas in a visual form. If you want to use any of these prompts for yourself, please do. If you're feeling stuck on how to answer any of them, something I like to do is to just fill a page or two with whatever comes to mind when I read the question and go from there. Sometimes this is how I discover some of the most interesting or valuable insights. So, I'm saving the reveal of these full final paintings for the show until the day of the opening. So I know it's a bit of a wait, but I want you to be excited about them. For now, I do have a treat at the end of the video for those of you who love tape peeling videos. And again, a big thank you to my patrons for supporting my work. It means so much to me, especially in these uncertain times. And I'll talk to you all again soon. And until then, 